Hello, everybody. Today I can compare key points. Compare. I can compare key points of graphs by finding them for each function and comparing them. So this is actually pretty identical to an Algebra 1 lesson. It comes up in Algebra 2 as well. And then we're going to kind of expand it uh, in the next lesson where we're going to do more on the calculator. So uh, let's just jump right into the examples. It's pretty intuitive. If it asks which of two things has a bigger or smaller whatever, you're just going to find that whatever and see which one's bigger or smaller. <clears throat> so let f be the function represented by the graph below. Let g be a function such that g of x equals. So there's two separate functions. There's f, it's called f of x, which is the graph. And then there's g of x, which is the equation. Two separate functions. One's a graph. One, it's giving you a graph. One, it's giving you an equation. Determine which function is the larger maximum value. Well, we're going to find the maximum value for each. For the graph, my maximum value is my turning point. So the maximum value is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, when it says maximum value, it's talking about the y value of the turning point. The y value of the vertex. So now for the bottom one, to find the maximum, I'm going to go to my calculator. I'm going to type it in, and I'm going to look at the graph just like I did for f. So I've got negative alpha y equals enter, one half x squared plus four x plus three, zoom six, <clears throat> now, I need to see a little bit more, so I'm going to, I want to see more of the top, so we talked about adjusting our window, so I'm going to go to window, and I'm going to make my Y max 20, graph, so now if I want to find my maximum, so Let's do it a couple ways. First of all, if I look at my table, my maximum is the middle of my table when I have a mirror image. So I can see my maximum right now in the middle is 4, 11. Therefore, the maximum is 11. So what I would do is I would just do a little sketch. I would write 4, 11. So this one has a maximum of 11. This one has a maximum of 6. Determine which function has the larger maximum value, g of x. Now, we can get into actually calculating it on the graph, but I feel like I wanted to put that into the next lesson. And it's also very clear to see, even when I go to zoom 6, is this higher than 6 or lower than 6? It's obviously higher than 6 because it's a little bit more than 10. So I think I'm just going to leave the calculator stuff, the, the calculating in the calculator, to the next lesson. Because you don't really need it for this one. This is number 2. I know it says 13, but it's not. Which function has the largest maximum value? Well, we're going to have to go through each choice and find the maximum value. Let's start with the easiest ones. The ones that are given to us here. This graph has a maximum value of looks like um, two in this table the maximum value is two and again maximum value is always the maximum x that maximum x and y value the maximum value is the or the minimum value is a maximum y or minimum y so now choice one I'm going to go to negative x squared plus 2x minus 1. I always zoom, start with zoom 6. It uh, looks like 0. And then choice 3. I'm hoping it's choice 3 because right now there's a tie. Negative 2x squared plus 3x. Of minus 3x <clears throat> plus 4, negative 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. 
and that one is definitely more than two. It looks like about uh, five. Let's look at our table. The biggest number I see in my table is five. So that might not be the actual maximum, but it's definitely the largest. It's approximate. That's my answer. Which function has the same y-intercept as the graph below? So this question is asking about maximums. It's asking about y-intercepts. So if it asks about y-intercepts, I'm going to find the y-intercepts. So the y-intercept of this graph is negative 3. Which function has the same y-intercepts? Well, in order to do that, I'm going to have to get each of these into y equals mx plus b form. <clears throat> and once they're in y equals mx plus b form, I can determine the slope and the y-intercept. So for the first one, twelve divided by four is three. Negative six over four is negative three over two. It reduces. <clears throat> Uh, 3 over 2x. If I put that into y equals mx plus b form, the x comes first, the y-intercept comes last, the y-intercept is positive 3, I need a y-intercept of negative 3, so choice 1 is out. Choice 2, 27 plus 3y equals 6x. Minus 27, minus 27. <clears throat> I do the algebra. I get y, y equals 2x minus 9. This has a y-intercept of negative 9. That's not negative 3. That one's out. Let's clear some space for me to do choices 3 and 4. <clears throat> choice 3 6y plus x equals 18 subtract x subtract x 6y equals negative x plus 18 divide by 6 y equals negative 1 6 x plus 3 positive 3 that's not negative 3 so that's not it so let's hope it's 4 y plus 3 equals 6x minus 3 minus 3. This has a y-intercept of negative 3. I want a y-intercept of negative 3. That's my answer. So conceptually, it's a really simple lesson. If they want, if you want to compare key points, maximums, minimums, y-intercepts, find that information for each and then tell me which one is bigger or smaller depending on what the question is asking for so we'll do a few more but again there's really not much more to this conceptually <clears throat> largest maximum we've been talking about already why don't you try number four and five on your own right now uh i don't want to go over both of them you know how about this why don't you try number five on your own right now just as a reminder to type in the absolute value bars. To type in the absolute value bars. So there's actually a couple different ways, but we're going to do alpha window one. So if I'm doing choice two and I want to type in absolute value of x plus three minus six, I'm going to hit alpha window. 1, x plus 3, and then I'm going to tab out to get to the minus 6. Uh, and I know we did that in the previous lesson, but, you know, I just want to talk about that again. So why don't you pause, complete number 5, unpause, and I'll go over it. Okay, now that you tried number 5 on your own, let's go over it. Which function has a minimum that is less than the one shown on the graph. Well, the one shown on the graph is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 
so I'm going to go through the choices and see what my minimums look like. Choice one is x squared minus 6x plus 7. <clears throat> Graph or zoom 6. That is definitely not less than negative 7. That looks like negative 2 maybe. I'm going to say approximately negative 2. That's definitely not less than negative 7. Choice 2, <clears throat> y equals alpha window 1, x plus 3, minus 6, zoom 6, or just graph. That minimum looks to me like negative 6. Let's look at the table. And as you can see in the table, the smallest value is in fact negative 6. So that is not less than negative 7. So now we've got x squared minus 2x minus 10. Pretty sure this is going to be the answer. Since the y-intercept is negative 10, that's obviously less than negative 7. So I'm very confident that this is going to be the answer, but I'm going to look at it anyway. And I can see it's below negative 10. Um, it's probably something like negative 11. Let's see what the table tells me. I see a negative 11, so that one looks good. But I'm going to go through the final choice just to be sure. Also, if you understand your properties of your graph and your transformations, I know that choice four is an absolute value graph. It's positive, so it's going to open up. It's shifted right eight and up two, so I'm pretty confident that the minimum value here is going to be two. And uh, sure enough is. So which one is a minimum that's less than the one shown in the graph? Well, the one in the graph has a minimum of negative 7. Choice 3 is the only one that has a minimum that is less than that. So again, I hope you're getting the gist of this lesson. I mean, conceptually, it's really pretty simple. If you want to know which of two things is more or less, then find those two things and compare them. I don't think I need to go over that one. Um... Let's just talk about number seven quick. To find the x-intercept. The x-intercept is when y is... Here, let's kind of write this down. The x-intercept of something is when y is zero. The y-intercept is when x is zero. So to find an intercept, it's always when the other one is zero. So, for this one, it's asking which one's x-intercept is larger. So, we're looking to see when y is 0. So, this one has an x-intercept of 2. And this one, you would type it into the calculator and you could look at the table. You can look at the graph. Uh, I'm not going to finish it for you, but I just wanted to give you that piece. For x-intercept or y-intercept, the x-intercept is when y is 0. The y-intercept is when x is 0. It's always when the other one is 0. Um, we talked about this in the uh, earlier, uh, earlier in the year. A relative min or a relative max is just a turning point. Um, it's supposed to be the absolute. So, for example, if I saw something like this, this and this would be a relative minimum. This one right here, even though it's not the minimum value of the graph, it's it's called a relative min because it turns around there, comes back up. We did that earlier this year, so that's it. So that's all I'm going to do with you. Your classwork slash homework is going to be to finish this key points. It comes up on really almost every regions. Um, in both Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, so it's really important. It's not very difficult. I can compare key points of a graph by finding them for each. If I want to know which one's the greatest max, find the max for all of them, and then compare them. Whatever one's the biggest is the biggest. Whichever one's the smallest is the smallest. Have a great day.